Attention please. This uploading is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles G Pitchell. Follow us. I'm not going to be able to keep doing this. Oh, I love you too. Good baby. I feel if I can take them home and get them better, they'll always love me. Don't talk to them. Let's go. Back yourself way into a corner. He's far deep in the hole. You spend more time with the dogs than you do with your grandkids. They do love me. My name is Janice, and I've always loved dogs and cats. You can be a pretty bully. And I couldn't imagine being without animals. Hi, Nana. What do you mean? What I love about Janice is she likes to help uh, people and animals out. I go and get get you, Nana. She's fun. I can tell her pretty much everything. You know, we're like kind of like best friends. They're all sweet dogs. They're great. And I got to know each one of them individually like my own kids. She calls them her people, and I always tell her they're not people, they're dogs. The dogs are really loud. They're all barking at once. The smell is, is pretty horrible. Uh, the smell takes your breath down a little bit, where you feel like you can't breathe that much. They go to the bathroom wherever they find a spot on the floor. They gotta pee, they'll pee on whatever counter. I would say it's not a good situation. I couldn't do it. I don't know how she's doing it. I am concerned because I still know that I have I have more than I should have right now and it's it's over the limit. The whole situation is sad. She doesn't want anything bad to happen to the dog. I'm very worried about animal control coming in because she doesn't need to go to jail. What's remarkable across animal hoarders is they each have the belief that they are the very best person to love these animals and to care for them. They're blind to the neglect or the abuse that they create and they're lost in a world of good intentions. My childhood was absolutely wonderful. I had quite a few pets. I couldn't ask for a better childhood. I was 20, 20 years old, and madly in love. <laughs> I knew that he loved me, and he knew that I loved him. It was absolutely great. He was always one to send me flowers, and you know, he, he was always one to tell me how much he loved me. I was young and in love. <laughs> That was really hard because I had to go on and try to make a life for myself, and he wasn't there. So it was, it was really hard. It was really hard.
She lost her first husband in the car wreck at a very young age. I don't know if that has something to do with it or if something is missing in her life. I got lonely. So I decided, I said, well, maybe I'll, you know, go into breeding these Yorkies. I did pretty well. I actually did pretty well with breeding the Yorkies and all. And I mean, it brought in, you know, the extra cash that I needed to keep me going. I think she's just the, the most wonderful woman I've ever known. We just kind of started doing things together. Then next thing you know, I had Lindsay. <laughs> Couldn't ask for a better mom. She looked after Lindsay better than anybody I think I've ever seen look after any child. She stopped selling the Yorkshires and started keeping them all. Then she got another dog. Then it just seemed to keep going and going and going. The problem was the little guys barked all night. And I was trying to relay this to her, but she didn't want to hear it. Yeah, I would, her and Dom had pretty good times in the beginning. She was happy. When I walked in there and the doctor says, you know, did it's cancer, I just, you could have heard a pin drop. He says, you've got to go through a bone marrow transplant. My girlfriend, Carolyn, she told me, she says, I know why you're here. And I said, why is that? She goes, because you couldn't leave the dogs. She says, it was the dogs. She says, that's all you talked about, you know, that you had to get home and take care of your kids. She said, it was your animals that kept you alive. We really don't have much relationship now. Don moved into the other trailer in around the middle of December. I don't think you'd want to sleep with 20 dogs or 30 dogs and on a daily basis. And it just, you know, part of it. I slept in that camper to be able to get sleep. He stopped doing things for me. It became more of a controlling thing. Her relationship with Don's been over. When they do talk, it's all it is is arguing. She don't want to be with him, and I don't think he wants to be with her. Did you get dog food? No, I didn't get dog food. Like that, guys. Come on, watch out, watch out. He won't watch out, watch out. pay the bills. He has actually cut her phone off. Here's your food. Well, there was five and a half years I was working two full-time jobs just to make the money to pay for the dogs. Every day they're costing me money. I said, it doesn't matter to you, it's out of my pocket, it's not out of yours. I'm on disability, so I don't make that much money. I feel trapped because if I don't take care of them, nobody will. Because I mean, I'm all they've ever known. I think the best future would be for her to get rid of the animals and move on with her life and be happy. I think she's more worried about the dogs than herself. I hope that she can get out of that smell and out of that trailer and away from Dawn. It really has to be done to save her life.